I got a call about a Husqvarna zero turn mower that won't start, won't run. And the owner of this actually took it in and had a mechanic look at it and he slammed this handle for the safety switch and he got it to start. So I used that that way for a little while and kept slamming that and eventually it wouldn't run anymore. So he started working on this switch and I guess there's a problem in here somewhere. He said it's hard to get it out. He did get a new switch. See if we can get it diagnosed and get it fixed. Well the first thing I want to do is just check and see if we have 12 volts that we're working with. DC volts. Yep, we got 12.74. Plenty. Good battery. I like to start simple and then work my way through it. Next thing I want to do is take this new switch and plug it in without installing it. Just hold this in and see if I can get it to turn over. All right, I got a helper to sit on the seat. So that engages the switch in the seat, the safety switch. I'm gonna reach down and the switch I just put in, I'm gonna engage that, depress that, and we'll turn the key. Mower deck's off. The other handle's out. That should be engaged. And we got nothing. So that's not gonna fix the problem. We'll have to dig a little deeper. The next thing I want to do in diagnosing this is see if I've got a problem with the safety switch system or something else. So we checked for voltage. He did put a new solenoid in and this is the old solenoid that he took out. And there's two poles on this. This pole goes back to the starter. The other pole goes to the positive on the battery. And what you can do to bypass the, the switches is just take a piece of metal and touch those two together and see if it'll turn over. If it will, that tells you that you've got a problem probably in your safety switch system. So let's go ahead and cross those poles and see what happens. Oh yeah! So we're good. That tells me, and we've already checked this switch here. So I don't think it's that arm, and it's real common for seat switches to go bad. So I'm going to check that next. Of course the seat switch is underneath the seat here. Just pull this little tab up and wiggle that back and forth and disconnect that. And we've got a black wire which is ground and then a cross wire that loops back to the from the first and third prong on here and the switch is actually I think this blue and green wire so I'm going to take a paper clip and bypass those or complete the circuit on those and so I'm bypassing this switch here see if that fixes the problem if it does then that tells me this seat switch is bad and maybe they were messing with this handle and bouncing up and down on the seat. And all the while it was the seat and not the handle. We'll see. All right, number one and three here. I'm gonna put the seat down. I don't have that touching any metal, so I bypassed the seat. Now, of course, I don't have that switch connected for the other handle, so it's not going to start. But without that switch for the handle connected, I should be able, if, it, if the seat switch is bad, I should be able to turn this key to the on position and turn the PTO on. And if the PTO is good and the switch is working, then the PTO should kick in. I should hear a click. And I don't. Let me try depressing this other switch. 
Nothing. All right, let me go ahead and see if it'll start. Maybe we've got a problem here too. No, we got nothing. Since that didn't work, the only two switches we're left with is the PTO and this other arm. The PTO is going to be a little harder to get at, so I'm going to check this arm first, and then uh, if that doesn't do it, we'll go to the PTO. And it won't start. The next thing I'm going to do is check for 12 volts at the safety switches with the key on. With the key on, I should have 12 volts at one of the wires on the safety switch. So I've got my voltmeter on, multimeter on, and we'll go ahead and check the seat. And what I'm going to do is touch the black wire I got on DC volts, touch the black wire to the ground, and my hot lead. I should have 12 volts at one of these two wires. I got nothing there. And I got nothing there. Ah! Now I'm going to check one of the switches from the hydro arm. And one of these wires should also be hot with the key on. Nothing. And I got nothing on all four of those. So, <laughs> this might be simpler than I thought. We're getting there. I might have a blown fuse somewhere on this. So I'm going to check the fuses. I found one fuse. And it's hidden underneath here. <laughs> it's just an inline fuse in the wire. It's a 20 amp fuse. That looks a little ugly, but it's hard to tell. I'm going to go ahead and test it. And to test this fuse, all I need to do is switch over to continuity, which is the horseshoe. I'll go to 20 thousandths. And all this tests, I'll turn it on. You touch these two leads, you get a one. You touch these two leads together and you should get a zero if you have continuity. That means there's not a break in the line. There we go. I'll go ahead and test this. If this is good fuse, I'm going to get a zero again because that means there's no break in that, in the wire. If it stays a one, that means there's a break in there and the fuse is bad. Oh! I can get nothing out of this. Yeehaw! <laughs> we might have a bad fuse. Let's go ahead and get a new one. See if that takes care of it. And if you don't have a multimeter, typically you can look in these and see. There's just a like a arch in there. It's just a thin wire. You can usually see if that wire's broken or not broken. It's a little hard to see in this one. Picked up some fuses. Obviously I'm not doing this job at my shop, so having to willy-nilly put things together. But I am going to take a step of faith here and plug everything back in and assume it's just the fuse.
much trouble. Hope you learned a little bit from this. If this video was a help to you, give her a thumbs up if you haven't already. Please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online.